team that I'm raising UCC now um, because I have been as against UCC as, as anyone based on the horrors that I have heard of and seen in people using it. But now that we have this element of the deep pole, it becomes an incredibly powerful tool to use because it gives them really two choices. Either they destroy their system of evil, which ultimately has to end, or they seek to keep it alive for a bit longer, in which case they have to admit the sin. One way or the other, they have no way of attacking us anymore. Eventually the veil will drop. Yes, eventually we'll see people with brute force, but we will have then brought them to a point where no one can be under the illusion that these people follow or honour any kind of law. And when we get them to that point, the truth is, in history, that once you bring a tyrant to the point that they display nothing but contempt for all forms of law, their existence is measured in weeks, not years. So the quicker we get them to that point, the quicker we will see them removed and we can see change. So you send your deed poll, you have no response, we will be issuing a bill and showing you how to do that. A notice of ecclesiastical dishonour will show you how to do that. A registered mail, notary public proof of service, and then we will be registering this under UCC 1 with the deed poll as the goods delivered. And this will all be packaged up to show you what to do. It. This is not through a course. You're not going to be charged for it. We want people to be competent with positive law, competent with canon law, um, competent with how the system works, and then be confident that as you move forward with your standing, that you can follow up when these people refuse to follow their own rules. Because I know the biggest question people ask, rightfully, is how do you get them to enforce? How do you enforce when they refuse to follow? Well, this is how we use it. We're using their own iniquity against them. We're using UCC against them, lawfully. Um, after you send that, after um, three days, if they have not... And by the way, what's the, bill, what's the amount for the bill? The bill amount is $10 million. Why? Because members are insured, underinsured for $10 million credits under the Acadia. So $10 million. Well, the question someone's going to ask is, $10 million, why not $100 million? Why not a billion? Why? Because they have stripped your energy from the time you were born. And the figure of 10 million is a fair and reasonable reflection of that. If you want to get creative and start putting numbers on it, and many people have done that, then you are moving outside of the fair and reasonable uh, frame of reference. 10 million is a fair, reasonable reference considering what they've done against us. But once you start to overstep the mark, then you are moving outside of the, I, I believe, the moral, moral frame of reference here, which, which really entitles us to claim that which they've taken from us without our permission. So it's both the insurance number and a fair frame of reference, moral frame of reference, for what they have stolen from us. So we send that after three days, you don't get a response. So then we'll be following up a certificate of ecclesiastical protest. We'll be presenting the bill for the second time and we'll be seeing that by registered mail along with a uh, notary proof of service. And we'll be adding that to the original UCC using the UCC as our docket. And then after three days, if they haven't responded and they may not respond, then we'll be issuing a notice of lien, a notice of agricultural lien. We'll be presenting the bill for the third time, matched to the lien, except this time, in traditional concept of a bill, at 90 degrees, the lien in their name, in the name of the clerk, will be the acceptance. So now what we have is a perfected bill, a perfected international bill of exchange, with the lien being the acceptor of the bill. The only thing that's missing is a stamp from a bank, that monetizes the bill to turn it literally into $10 million. But we are 90% there. So the bill then for $10 million has been perfected by the acceptance of the lien, and we send that to the clerk with the, uh, through keeping track of the UPU notice and notary public proof of service, and we uh, add that to the docket. <clears throat> but we also do one more thing. 
we issue a distress warrant to the uh, district attorney requesting them to seize the bond of the clerk. Now, once we do that, and we have obviously got documentary evidence and we give them the references, we don't have to send them copies of everything uh, because it's on the UCC, we then have to allow 90 days for that to mature. And then after 90 days, uh, we have several options. If they haven't sent us a cheque for $10 million, and they may not, but don't discount the fact that it's not zero chance that they won't send you a cheque. There is a slim chance I'll send you a cheque because they know that they have no way out. And if they don't, we're about to do the same thing to the State Attorney General. But if after 90 days they have not uh, responded, then what we do is, through our trust, we will set up a special deposit trust account We'll have our deed of trust, which is another document we'll provide to you. You'll have your EIN number through SS4, through IRS, which is uh, for a foreign entity, a foreign trust, and we'll show you how to do that properly. And in setting up your account, you will deposit the bill, a perfected bill that is underwritten now, not only by the lien, but by the insurance bond that should also have been seized. And the bank will be obliged. They don't have an option. They will be obliged to monetize that bill, that perfected bill, perfected by all the rules of their system for a fee. They might charge 5%, they might charge 10%. But then the remainder of that $10 million will be able to be drawn down, site drawn, from that point. You will have minus the fees of the bank, the $10 million in a period of 100, 110 days. Now, I know a lot of people have said things over time and it's easy to say these things. And I know we're dealing with people who lie for a living, who cheat for a living, who have hidden a system predicated on sin, on, on, on using our souls as surety. So I'm fully aware of what we're dealing with. I'm fully aware. And I have not said tonight what I've said merely just to throw Amber claims out there. But it is time for us to stand up and be what we are and reclaim what is ours lawfully and behave competently. And if in the process they refuse their rules, then they will be destroying their system. Now, when they destroy their system, we are not talking about anarchy because the whole reason Eucadia is the way it is and why it's so easy for people to misinterpret Eucadia is that a complete global system of law and finance has been designed. It's not finished, but it has been designed. And many people have looked at it and said, well, clearly Eucadia is creating some new world order. We're not. We're creating an alternate model for the day that a system that promotes sin being destruction being hate being murder being crime is over and we can replace it with a system that supports harmony sustainability respect equality the very things that we hope and, and, and pray will come so if the system ultimately does not do what it's supposed to do they will be destroying this system. And at the end of the day, I know a lot of us would like to have the, the millions of dollars, but really for our children, our children's children, what we hope is the world that we hope and pray and trust will come. So I've covered a lot of stuff in that uh, period. I'm going to stop now. I'm going to open up for questions, and I again thank all of you for who have been listening. Thank you. Hi, right, Terry. Questions? Just waiting for a moment to see if we can get uh, Terry to unmute and uh, get people to uh, be able to, uh, to ask questions. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, we will uh, we'll get that underway in a sec. I'll just send a note to Terry to see if I can get Terry to uh, to unmute and we can start getting questions. 
I tell you what, while we're waiting for this, um, I'm going to give you a email address. <clears throat> if you want to email, I'll quit. this is one way that I can get a question. You can get me a question now, um, and that is uh, uh, Frank F R A N K dot O Collins. Uh, that's Frank, full stop, O-C-O-L-L-I-N-S at Eucadia, U-C-A-D-I-A dot com. So you can send me a question through the email. I should be able to get the question there. And we'll also see if we can get some questions through in a second, through um, also through TalkShoe. So I'm just going to get into TalkShoe now and see if I can get... Um, if I can get uh, Questions coming through. So one sec, one sec. I'm just going through. Um, I'm joining in. So uh, if you can get questions into the chat, and I'm just about to call it up, uh, I can answer, start answering questions through the chat. So I'm just getting it loaded up at the moment. And uh, if Brian you can hear us, then another way is to um, also get some questions to... Well, there are two ways there. Okay, so I'm into the chat at the moment. Um, as I said, you can send me questions through email or you can actually... Okay, here we go. So we've got questions here. Uh, guest 11, I have a case that was finished, not closed, about seven months ago. It was a criminal case. Can I go back with a deed file? So this is a question from Guest 11. A case not finished, but um, yes, you can, absolutely. If the case is not closed, then the clerk is still the trustee, and you absolutely have the right um, to be able to go back. So Guest 11, if you can type in, let me know if that... Um, if that uh, you got that answer, all right? Okay. Um, Andy YKY asked this question: uh, When you say the bankers are obliged to monetize the deal, does that mean they are obligated uh, to do so, or that they may if they want to? <clears throat> well, it's actually the rules of of, um, of what a bill exchange um, is. Unfortunately, and, and I've gone through a lot of different um, uh, books, a lot of old books of banking, and you get different um, uh, interpretations. But it's effectively with a bill, uh, when you present a bill, the bill ultimately needs to be presented uh, a minimum of uh, three times to be perfected. So a bill requires several things. It needs a maker, it needs an acceptor, uh, and it needs an underwriter. So I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, but effectively the maker um, uh, is uh, us creating uh, a, a, uh, a uh, bill identifying a debt. Uh, we're sending that through to uh, the other, uh, being this case a clerk. Uh, the clerk will not accept the bill first off. So what happens is that becomes a dishonour that means that's recorded as a, as, um, uh, well, it's effectively giving people the option to decline. Uh, the lien, ultimately, by the perfecting of their obligation, means that they become the acceptor. So the lien um, means that the bill has been accepted, and that means the only thing left is the monetization. Now, um, when a bank... Um, has a draft and they want to, um, and you want that to be um, validated, it's all about what underwrites it. So the lien underwrites the bill and is also the acceptor, but then when we get to um, 90 days, the bond of the clerk uh, underwrites the lien, and after 90 days, it's deemed to have been a perfected underwriting because the um, normal period of closing the account um, is at the outer marker is 90 days. So um, by drawing the draft, what's happening is the bank has accepted the, um, uh, the liability and they will go and pursue the, the, capturing of the, um, the capturing of the amount from the state, which they'll get. 